Good morning, Kipster. Welcome back to science class. I am Miss Dobek, and today we are going to talk about magnetism. Now, this is a reminder that this is your science specials class. So if you're talking about magnets in your science class, this is just to add to that. Let's get started. Magnetism is the property of attracting certain metals. I'm sure you've played with and seen magnets before, but today we're going to be talking about how they work and what we can use them for. Last week, we talked about forces. We talked about contact forces that are a push and a pull. When you're touching something, you can push it or pull it. If you push something, it's moving away from you. If you pull something, it's moving toward you. Now, magnetism is a non-contact force. That means we can't see it. You can see if I'm touching something, pushing and pulling it, but a non-contact force is invisible. However, it still involves a push or a pull. So if we think of our magnet as the point of force, if it's pushing something, it's moving away from the magnet, if it's pulling something, it's moving towards the magnet. Now, we can use magnets for a lot of different things. We can use it to hold objects together, to connect it to other objects. A lot of common uses that you might think of are refrigerators, um, junkyards, whiteboards. Look, I've got magnets right over there. Um, they're also used in doorbells and electronics. So here are some pictures of the purpose of magnets. Here's a doorbell. Here are some magnets on a refrigerator. And here a magnet is being used to move scraps in a junkyard. Now what we're gonna do is watch this video of somebody using a giant magnet. Now this is a very special type of magnet. It's called an electromagnet, which means it can be turned on and off. They're going to turn it on to move some of this metal. Check it out. Welcome to Grado Metals Recycling in Mississauga, Ontario. This is where metals come to be sorted and recycled. This is a magnet grapple. It's a big machine that helps with the sorting. That big plate at the end of the arm is an electromagnet. That's Kyle. He's making it work. Kyle presses a button that sends electro currents to the magnet so he can pick up tons of metal. Then he can take it where it needs to go and stop the electrocurrents to drop it. Wow! The magnet grapple can even pick up a car! There it goes! Kyle uses a big piece of metal to crush the car and make it flat. Whoa! The magnet grapple is so strong! Magnets help us do all kinds of things, like sort metals so they can be recycled properly. Magnets are awesome! All right, so let's talk about what materials are magnetic because a magnet cannot move everything. It can only move certain materials. 
as you can see on this slide, there are four metals that are magnetic. Those metals are cobalt, iron, nickel, and steel. So if we think back to that junkyard video, everything that that magnet was moving has to be made out of one of these materials. Sometimes you might try to put a magnet on something that seems metal, but it doesn't stick. That means it's not made out of one of these metals. So a refrigerator, a whiteboard has to have either cobalt, iron, nickel, or steel on it in order to be magnetic. Now, the reason magnets work is because they have a magnetic field. Now, this is something that's really cool. The Earth also has a magnetic field. If you look at this picture over here on the right, you can see the North Pole and the South Pole start our magnetic field and it goes all the way around the Earth. That's why we say that magnets have a north end and a south end because that's how their magnetic field works too. You can see it kind of looks the same as the magnetic field around the Earth. So if you've ever heard the say saying opposites attract, that's talking about magnets. Opposite poles or different poles attract. So let's think about that as a non-contact force. If I have a south pole, of a magnet and a north pole of a magnet and they pull towards each other, that's going to be a push. We call that attract. So they move together. If you put the same poles together, so a south pole and a south pole or a north pole and a north pole, they push away from each other. We call that repel. So as you can see here, there's a south pole and a north pole. They're moving towards each other. They're attracting, they're pulling together. The South Pole and the South Pole are the same, so they're gonna repel or push away from each other. So this is everything I just said. An attraction is a pull towards each other. Opposites attract, it has to be north to south or south to north. And this can only occur with a magnet and a magnetic material, so it has to be iron, cobalt, nickel, or steel. A repel is like a push. Likes, or the same poles, north to north and south to south, repel or push away. And that can only occur with two magnets. That's not going to happen if you're trying to put it on a magnetic material. Now, I want you to watch this one more video about different experiments with magnets. And while we're doing this, I want you thinking, are these attractions or are they repelling? If it's attracting and pulling together, is it the same or is it different poles? Keep those things in mind while you enjoy this really cool video.
All right. I hope that you found that video as cool as I did. I had no idea that some magnets could act like that. Let's talk about it for just a second before I release you to go do your activity. Now, when there was a liquid material moving over a metal, what type of, a tr of force do you think that was? Were they attracting or repelling? They were attracting, they were moving towards each other. Anytime the magnets were moving towards each other, they were attracting, which means their poles were opposite. So in the end of the video, when they were pushing those two magnets together and they slammed together to make something explode, that was opposite poles coming together. Anytime we saw a magnet floating, they were repelling, right? They were staying away from each other, pushing away from each other. That means that they had to be the same pole. So that was either north and north or south and south. Now, I want you to head to your classwork on Google Classroom and find the week three magnet sort activity. It is just like last week when we were sorting the pushes versus pulls. This time you're gonna look at the objects and you're gonna think, is this magnetic or not magnetic? And you're going to sort them into the columns. Now remember, magnetic materials have to be metal. They are iron, cobalt, steel, and nickel. I can't wait to see your hard work and I'll see you next time.